International concern is mounting over recent clashes at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The UN Security Council is holding an emergency meeting on the crisis. Meanwhile, Muslim worshippers have been praying outside the mosque in protest against Israeli security measures. The trouble began with Israel's decision to install metal detectors at the Holy Building. Several people have been killed in protests against the increased security. Israeli forces have also clashed with Palestinians near Ramallah. Sweden, Egypt and France appeal to the UN Security Council to hold an emergency meeting on the matter. Let's get you more now on that UN Security Council meeting. I'm joined live from New York by UN correspondent G John Terrett. John, which countries are likely to attend the meeting and how will it help ease tensions? Hi, guys. Well, the focus really swifts now to New York City on this rainy day in the city. And I think that all 15 members of the council will be present. Of course, the council is chaired by China till the end of July and the meeting as you said has been called for by a number of European countries. It follows a very rare statement condemning the violence in the West Bank from the United States, from Russia, from the European Union and also from the United Nations. But there is a history to this. This tension which has overflowed in the last 10 days has been ramping up in the last couple of months going back maybe even into the latter part of 2016. And the problem is the Israelis have been doing lots of tunneling and excavating and building work around the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is also known as the Temple Mount in Judaism and also the Noble Sanctuary in Islam. It is the third holiest site in all of Islam. And so that building work has really annoyed the Palestinians. And so when the television cameras went in and the airport style security at the entrance to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, they've always had those things at the entrance to the Temple Mount section of the complex, but it's new to have them at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Palestinians and the Muslims, that was like a red rag to a bull to them, and they fear that the Israelis are trying to somehow take over that complex somehow further down the road. So that's really the background to this meeting, which gets underway here in New York sometime in the next couple of hours. We don't know exactly when, and it might be a behind-closed-doors meeting. So where is the way out, John? It's a very good question. Of course, as you know better than I do, this is a very, very long-running conflict. I think the council is going to meet today at whatever point they do, and it will either be in front of the television cameras or it will be behind closed doors. Uh, the, uh, the problem is that whatever the council says, it will most likely be ignored by the Israelis. They don't have a tremendous amount of respect for what the Security Council says when it comes to issues that they see are their own, and that is also vice versa. The Security Council and indeed the General Assembly doesn't much like many of the positions that the Israeli governments take when it comes to their own territory. I do think that that attack in Amman, Jordan on Sunday in which two Jordanians were killed and one Israeli embassy worker was badly wounded, that may well have an influence on this. It may well put some pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu who has, I I think rather been emboldened by his new relationship with Donald Trump. The two got on extremely well together when they met in Israel a couple of months ago. And Donald Trump did not get on well with the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who's been tasked with trying to bring peace to the Middle East, actually upset President Abbas very much with some of the things that he said. Now, in the last few minutes, the ambassador of Israel to the United Nations has issued a statement speaking at the stakeout just outside the Security Council chamber. He said this attack referring to the one in Amman, Jordan, is not an isolated incident. It's part of a wave of terror sweeping the free world. And he alluded to recent attacks on the Berlin Christmas market and also Manchester, the Ariana Grande concert. Now, what is the way out? Well, I think that eventually, and Netanyahu himself has already hinted this, that they, they may row back some of this security at the entrance to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, depending on what they view as the security threat. And I think eventually the television cameras and certainly the airport style security is likely to be removed. But it's a question really of how much more violence there is before that is even considered seriously by the Israeli government.